Hi, welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. So I reviewed the Titan a few days ago. What's the next obvious step? Reviewing the Hornet, of course, because the Hornet was part of the Unity Power System and came with the Titan. Uh, this video has been one of the most annoying to get done, and I will explain why at the end of this video. But first, we gotta cue the intro. <laughs> Hornet, a 2003 release out of Hasbro just like the Titan ASV-1, not the Titan CS-50, I gotta remind y'all, this is not the one that we're talking about. We're talking about the good one, the rocket launcher, not this one. This one is bad. This one is terrible. Ignore this, just pretend like that one doesn't exist. We're talking about the old one. Let me go get the old one in case you forgot what that looks like. Oh my gosh, this is so much better. Like, this thing is actually worth being called the Titan. This thing is just big. There have been big blasters before. This one actually does something interesting. Hasbro, come on. Stop renaming blasters and making the new versions worse than the original one. But yeah, the Hornet is a blaster that has been very highly beloved over the years, just as much as the original Titan, if not even more so, despite the fact that this thing is extremely hard to maintenance. And for the longest time, I did not see any appeal in this blaster at all. Yes, it's obviously an air blaster, but the thing is, Look how big this is, and it only shoots six darts. Six. That's it. That's the maximum capacity this thing holds, and it is huge. It's bigger than a Strife, for sure. It's almost as big as the Rapid Strike. If you put it over there, it is a big blaster for only being able to shoot six darts. So what's the deal with it? All in good time. We gotta start with the design, and holy crap, does the Hornet look fantastic in person? This is such a cool looking blaster. It really does look like the Titan. Like these two were made for each other, literally. They were physically made to be with each other. And this blaster looks just as good as the Titan, if not even better. I love the whole steampunk aesthetic that the original Titan went for. And this thing looks even more like a steampunk monstrosity. Look at this. What is this? That is such a cool looking piece in real life. Like it looks like it should be some sort of industrial power reactor or something that plugs into this giant silver shield piece looking thing up at the front and it does this. I'll address that in a bit. But then everything after here, like you've got this thing that goes down and then this big bracket on the top, everything else is just red and black and it's like super nicely done. All of it painted, by the way, everything red, everything black, everything silver has been painted. The only thing that is just solid plastic is the gray, like the whole front end of it, this part up here, this part here, and these parts down here. That's not painted, but everything else is. It just reminds me how much they, they stopped painting both sides. It just drives me nuts every time I remember. Uh, uh, Asbro, what the heck happened? Why do you do this to me? Let's move on to the ergonomics before I get too carried away in my misery. This blaster has a main grip and a pump. It kind of has a stock almost, but it's it's not a stock. You're not going to be using it as a stock unless you use this thing as an integration for some sort, which I might be alluding to in the future, if you know what I mean. But the main grip on this blaster is really close to being an absolute godsend straight from heaven, except for the fact that the bottom half of it is too small. If we actually take a look at the grip, you can see that it's very nice and rounded from all angles, and it's got this very nice finger choil for your middle finger, but your ring and pinky finger don't have much room to hang around in right here. And it really does feel cramped around those two fingers. It's not the worst thing in the world. It's not really good though. It definitely feels cramped around your ring finger and your pinky finger. Meanwhile, the whole top half of your hand feels very nice and comfortable. The bottom half feels very different. And it's a really weird feeling because usually when it comes to comfort with grips, it's either really good all the way through or really bad all the way through. This one I'm extremely conflicted on because the whole top half of the grip is really good, but the bottom half is just too small. I think if they added just like a little bit extra of a quarter inch there for your ring and pinky finger, I wouldn't be complaining at all. And the biggest issue is that I don't have the biggest hands. A lot of y'all probably know this, so if it's a problem for me, it's probably going to be a problem for a lot of other people. As for the foregrip, this is the pump handle thing, the, the air pump 
whatever you want to call the thing. And it is very nice. It feels just like the Mag Strikes, except unlike the Mag Strike, this actually has a lot more surface area for you to get a good grip on. And I can comfortably close my whole hand around it without my fingers touching each other, which is a very nice feeling and one that you'll probably want because if you're gonna be using this thing, it's probably gonna be as your primary and I'm going to explain why. So how does this blaster work? Well, you load in six darts at the front. And now you can do one of two things. Well, you have to pull this thing forwards and then push it back. And I will explain what that does later on, but then you pump it about 10 to 15 times. I'm gonna pump it 12. Now you have two options here. You can either pull the main trigger or press this big orange button on the side. Let me just break the fun for you really quick. What happens if you press the button? It shoots all six at the same time with an insane amount of power. But at this point, you're probably thinking, well, that's what I expected it to do. So what does the trigger do? Well, let's pull the trigger and see what happens. It shoots one, and then 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 it shoots one. This blaster has six individual air tanks, tiny ones but six individual ones nonetheless, specifically designed to give each individual barrel the same amount of airflow and performance as the first one. This is what Smart AR Blasters should be like. It really is. Wait a minute. Smart ARs? This was the first one that used smart ARs. You know what that means? That means you can thank the fact that this and other monstrosities like it exist because of the Hornet. That really sucks. Let's start talking about the triggers before I get too depressed. This blaster has two main triggers. It's got the big button, which is ambidextrous, and it's got the main trigger. The button is just a big blast button. It's a little bit smushy, but actually pops pretty nicely when you push it in. And it sticks out quite a bit, so it's pretty easy for you to just hold it and just go like that to push it in. Or if you have really long fingers, do that. I, I wouldn't recommend doing this. I would rather just reach up and push it with your thumb or something like that, but I don't know. As for the main trigger, this is what you call a trigger. It is really, really snappy and it feels extremely good. And there's a really interesting reason for that. As you can probably imagine, this blaster being a six dart air tank smart AR semi-automatic thing has a really, really weird internal mechanic setup. And you're probably wondering what this thing does. That is actually the priming handle, even though there is no spring that is primed at all. What it actually does is it cycles the active barrel to the top left one. And when you pull the trigger, now the active barrel is the top right, and it continues to move down until you reach all the way at the bottom. So theoretically, if you don't touch this at all, and you pump it up, it will only shoot out of the bottom right hand barrel. And it will probably shoot out of that one barrel extremely hard. That is exactly what happens. With a caveat, it actually shoots so hard that it destroys your dart. All the collectors are gonna be mad when I show them this one. Here is my test dummy suction dart that came with the blaster. Um, yeah, that is the result of over pumping a single barrel and then firing it at max velocity. It is so violent that it destroyed this dart. And luckily it's in a spot where I could probably just put a little bit of scotch tape around it and it'll be fine. I've done it before, I'll do it again. I wanna save these darts, but I'm just saying it can very much happen and probably will. As for actually pulling the pump forwards and then pulling it back, it's pretty smooth up until you get there. You see, this blaster has a really interesting pump, super smooth to pull forward. You pull it back, it's very smooth, and then... What the heck was that? It squeaks every single time. There is no way to avoid it. This pump handle squeaks. I don't know why it squeaks so much when you do that, but it's, it's really weird.
No, this is better than the Moto Blitz. I'm sorry. This feels so much better than that thing does. Sell the Hornet. I thought this thing sucked. I'd seen pictures of this thing for ages. And I always saw these things for really, really cheap on Facebook Marketplace over the years. I never wanted it. I never picked it up. I never understood why this thing was so popular because look how big it is and look at how many darts it shoots and how far apart the barrels are. Like the barrels are far apart there. I can easily fit my fingers between the barrels because of how far apart they are. I didn't understand how this thing worked or why it was so cool. Let me tell you exactly why this thing is so cool. I have never in my life seen another blaster that you get such a crisp analog trigger pull semi-auto mechanism from that isn't flywheel powered. There's no Springer that does that. There's no AEG that does that. Even on the nicest AEGs possible, when you pull the trigger, it doesn't have that tactile feel. You are still pulling an electronic switch that takes a second for the thing to prime and then fire the blaster. The Stampede is slow. Even my nice professional airsoft blasters don't feel as good as this thing does to fire. This blaster offers something that nothing else can provide. It is such a nice blaster. And you may not have realized it, but throughout the course of this video, I have been actively switching out the Hornets that I've been using to talk about. Because this isn't my only Hornet. I have two. And believe me, there's a good reason for that, because I would have just liked to have one. I, I, I love the way it feels to hold two of these, though. This is, this is maximum intimidation. I look at you like this, that is terrifying. Change my mind! But yeah, having a unique mechanism comes at the cost of being really, really irritating to maintenance. But that's not the problem. The problem is there is a freaking stripped screw up at the top front of the blaster that I have tried for a very long time to get out, but literally could not. And this was the brand new one that I got in my Unity power system that came with the Titan. This one, the all beat up looking one, is actually far more functional and works as intended. Ah, no, drop it on the floor. It doesn't matter. The paint's not perfect anyways. This one I am keeping in good condition because theoretically, if I were to be able to get this thing open, I would like to swap the internals out of these so that I could keep the nice one in nice condition and then just use this one for parts or something like that. But as it stands right now, I have a nugget looking one that works really good and I've got a really good looking one that works like a nugget. Specifically for the design portion of this video, I used the broken one because I wanted you guys to see what this blaster was actually supposed to look like without all of the nicks and scuffs and stuff. But I'm gonna be honest, even with the nicks and scuffs and stuff, this blaster still looks good. This thing just looks so freaking good. I love the Hornet. I think that this is one of the coolest blasters ever. And it really made me realize something. Nerf air powered blasters do not get used enough. There were tons upon tons of air powered stuff back in the day, but most recently, the only one that actually is functional is the Moto Blitz. And the Moto Blitz is a nugget at best. I mean, that blaster is good, but not very good. It's, it's mediocre at best. This thing is a air powered pump blaster first and foremost, and really goes above and beyond with the mechanics. Even without stuff like this, you've got the Mag Strike, you've got the Rapid Fire 20, you've got the Titan, you've got stuff like the freaking Busby Panther. The Busby Panther was so good! You've got the Secret Strike, which... A little bit of a side tangent here. Somewhere in this house, I have a Secret Strike. But the, the gimmick of it being tiny actually ended up being a deterrent. Because I can't find it anywhere. I've looked in pretty much every box I can think of, I looked in every storage container, I looked in the attic, I looked in the basement, I looked everywhere. I can't find it. If I do somehow manage to find the secret strike, I will review it, but I don't know if that's ever going to happen because I, I don't know where it is. I can't find the secret strike. And I used to have two of them. Brand new. We got two secret strikes new. I can't find either of them. They're gone. I miss my secret strike. I loved that thing so much. Maybe someday I'll find it. Or maybe someday I'll just cave and get another one, but yeah, the Secret Strike was another air-powered blaster that rocked. I'm getting off topic. If you do find one of these blasters and you can tell that it is in working condition and you either that or you have the tech know-how to figure out how to open it and fix it, be warned the internals of this are completely different than any other nerve blaster you've ever seen and it kind of looks like spaghetti. 
but if you do know how to fix this thing and you're all right with opening it and fixing it, I highly recommend you take a look at this blaster. Not just because it is Nerf's first built-in integration, but also just because the blaster itself is way too cool and fun not to want to have and own and play around with because it's freaking awesome. So with all that said, I'm going to do something really quickly. I'm going to give you guys recommendations for where you can probably find Hornets. Not just eBay, but I personally recommend Blaster Barn. I got this one from Blaster Barn. It was very cheap and it is in perfect working order. Yeah, the pants all scuffed up, but it works very well. It works beautifully and I am very happy with this. So with all that said, thanks for watching. Bye.